Hello everyone, my name is Barbara and I would like to welcome you all to our latest Novage webinar episode. In this week's episode, BIM for everyone with CADSoft. Join us for this webinar to see how one simple model can be used to design, estimate and manage home building construction. The CADSoft product line is a true award-winning building information modeling solution designed specifically for the residential and light commercial markets. Today's presenter, Chantal Pitts, is the Director of Customer Service for CatSoft Corporation. She's a graduate architectural technologist and has also been involved in the residential design and construction industry for over 20 years. She has been a global guest speaker on residential design and BIM. Before we get going, here's an overview of what we do at Novedge. Novedge is one of the largest online stores for design software. We offer a huge assortment of software solutions that cater to virtually every designer's need. Put us to the test and come visit our webpage at novage.com. And for more, more daily software news and limited time promotions, pay a visit to the Novage blog and follow us on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter. Coming up next week, Real Flow 2015. Actually, not next week, but a month from now. We're going to have a little break. For webinar, but we'll start strong with RailFlow 2015, quality control and speed. And last but not least, today's webinar is free and is being recorded live. If you want to rewatch this or any webinar episode in our collection, just head on over to Novage's YouTube or Vimeo channels. And now without further ado, I'm gonna pass a microphone and screen to Chantal. Enjoy the presentation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation on BIM for Everyone. At CATSOFT, it's our tagline that BIM should be for everyone. So when you're starting to design a building, that even from the onset of that initial design, that simple model that you maybe your client has passed to you, should be able to be passed on and used throughout the whole design process for um, reuse of the information in that BIM model. So there's always a question of, what exactly is BIM? I've heard definitions, many different definitions all over the world, and everybody seems to have their own swing on what BIM is. Are they creating a, just a 3D model? Is it just creating that model? Does that make it BIM? Is it designing? Is it adding the extra documentation? Is it integrating and quantifying? So first I thought I'd take you a history through why we have BIM. Well, I started out myself, and maybe many of you have as well, hand drafting. And Beautiful art, the drawings were beautiful, but we all know that it didn't maybe be as efficient as it should be. We wanted to be able to make changes. So we introduced 2D CAD drawings, and wow, what a big upgrade that was. Now you could draw those lines on the screen, quickly update the text, and change any of the line work if you needed to if a design changed. And then the next integration was bringing in that 3D model. Now we have a 3D model. We can walk clients through that home and be able to show them different aspects of a design because it's in a 3D model. Well, now what BIM does is it's adding intelligence to that model. If we're designing a 3D element, well, shouldn't that element be intelligent? So when we're dropping in that window or specifying that door or that roofing material, if it had intelligence, well, then we could order it right away and we could generate automatic elevations and sections and details and submit them for approval and get everything done digitally. So that's our take on BIM, being able to take an intelligent model through the entire process, right from the design all the way into the construction and delivery right on this, the field. And what is the impact that BIM is having? Well, as you're aware, there's the volume of information is rapidly escalating. Everyone is attaching their digital information to any um, information they're putting online. So if you spec out a window online, there's information attached to that. Lots of information, the size, the SKU numbers, everything. So as we're getting more and more information, we need to find a way to seamlessly transfer that data from one person to the next, who's designing that building, who's ordering those windows, who's shipping out those windows. We don't want to miss any of that information. We want to make sure it's transferred seamlessly and that's why we have BIM, that intelligent model that we pass from person to person to person. They're using that same model, retracting out that same information. Small businesses 
are ideal for um, adopting them and using them because they retain control over all of the project data. Um, if, they're, if you're doing residential design and you're the builder, designer, that one man design build firm, because they have control over everything, can uh, readily um, use all of that BIM information quickly. The initial benefits of using a BIM software obviously are the fast 3D presentations, being able to walk someone through that 3D model. That's the biggest bang for your buck that you're going to get. And then you have that improved communication with your clients, because as you're walking them through and showing them the visuals, they can understand that design. They're not looking at those 2D floor plans anymore and trying to visualize. They're seeing exactly what you're trying to tell them. So that means there's less surprises on site, and you have accurate and automatic drawings, elevation sections, floor plans, details. Because you have that intelligent 3D model, all of that is a residual of that model. And then that means that you can have instant updates as the design change. Take that window that you've specified, bring in that new BIM object, that new window, and it'll instantly update those elevation sections and details. So there's not drawings hanging around that are outdated. The extended benefits of having a true BIM model are taking even more information out of that model, not just looking at the model and getting those automatic drawings, but retracting out cut lists. And if you're using um, manufactured housing, panel machine information, span tables, so that when you drop in a window, not only does it put in the window in the drawing, but it automatically knows the header size and how you're going to frame around that opening. A bill of materials. As you're drawing that wall, it should know what that wall is, how to frame that wall, and take out all of the materials in that wall and give you an estimate. Schedules. Again, we went back to talking about intelligent windows and doors. Then it should have automatic window and door schedules. Structural analysis. If I've drawn that 3D model, and again, even if we've brought it in from the homeowner who might buy um, software off the shelf, like our HGTV brand of software or our ProArchitect software, then they should be able to take that same model and then pass it over to the designer to finish off the design and then pass that off and get structural analysis done on it and interference. And then do some lighting calculations. If I have a 100 watt bulb in this one room, is there enough light there? Being able to do those types of added benefit checks on it. Energy analysis. A lot of different regions are now requiring you have an energy calculation accompanying your um, designs. That model should be able to tell you the energy that's being used by that home, depending on where it is in at that time of day. And then a validation against the local building codes. So that's the extended benefits of using a, a BIM product. So I put it into this little um, model for you here. We're drawing with an intelligent 3D model. And from there, we can export that file out into many different formats and share that information. Being able to share the information makes it a true intelligent model. Not just working in that same system, but being able to pass that information from system to system. And as it goes from system to system, it doesn't lose its intelligence. So exporting out that model in DWG, IFC format, SketchUp format, Vermal format. There's a number of different export formats um, that CADSoft exports out to, and I'll show you that today during our presentation as well. And then taking that information and using generating the perspectives, your working drawings, your estimates, so you can pass that off to your local building supply center, that same model, so they can do an estimate and su submit the materials for you on site, and taking those drawings, submitting them for approval. It's coming around the world as I visit different locations, uh, as an example, Singapore, and coming this fall, early spring next year, Great Britain. They're demanding that files be um, sent in for approval only in digital format. No more paper drawings, no more napkin sketches. It has to be a digital format, and that digital format has to be a specific file format. We've already started on that in the IFC exports that we can do, so it complies um, in Singapore and going into Great Britain as well. And you'll see that move in North America as well as more and more building officials 
want to see the intelligent uh, model that you're building with so they can do their checks and walk through in 3D themselves and make sure that that home works. 71% of building professionals are now using BIM. Some form of BIM, like I said, there's always that loose definition of what BIM is. But by already adopting BIM, they're saving time by never repeating themselves. They're increasing their sales because they can illustrate better what the final product is going to look like. And because they're efficiently reusing that model and passing it on, they're saving money in the long run as well. What I'd like to do now then is give you a presentation of Envisioneer. And um, I will just flip over my screen to my Envisioneer screen so you can see that as well. And I'm going to show you what makes an intelligent model. I'm going to start off by drawing some walls and building the walls themselves. So I'll just take a wall and I'm just going to start drawing with it. Now depending on how you come up with your initial design concepts, Instead of just sketching out like I am today, and I'm just drawing these walls, I can type in exact dimensions. You can see that down at the bottom of the screen. I could type in any dimension or um, just key it up with other walls that are already in there so I know they're in line. And as we're doing that, that initial design that I'm coming up with right now could have started in a number of different formats. A client could have come to you with a 3D model themselves our personal architect or our HGTV software, there's over 40,000 copies of those sold a year to homeowners. Homeowners that want to start sketching up their home. They could pass you that model and then you can open it directly or we also allow you to import PDF files. When you import a PDF file then you can trace over top of that sketch they've made. Maybe they've drawn up in even just a line sketch, a hand drafting an illustration of the home and maybe they made it to scale. Import the PDF. Or maybe they started it off in a CAD package. Import that. Or again, maybe it's a sketch but they saved it as a JPEG or a bitmap. We can bring those in too. Bringing that data in to create the model, the start of the model. And then using the elements as we go through. So now that I've got the walls drawn, now I can go through and insert the doors. And when I put the doors in, I'm going to center this exactly on the wall. I can flip their swings or put them any way that I need them to go. These aren't just symbols. It's not just a door symbol. It's not just a wall symbol. If I double click on this wall, I'm going to bring up its information. It knows that it's a framed wall. It knows when I go to frame that wall that it's going to be using two by sixes. If I look at the two by six itself, the 2x6 recognizes that it can come in different purchase lengths. So when I go to frame the wall, it'll have my pre-cut stud lengths in there that knows that they can only be used for a stud. I have my 16-foot pieces that are maybe my preferred stock length of lumber that I want to arrive on site, and I can say use those for any usage. But don't give me any 10-footers for plates or blocking. So we can even get down to designating each one of these lengths of lumber and how we want to use them. So when I'm building this model, it knows what pieces of lumber to draw out and start using. These um, items here and these members, you can see all have their own unique part number as well. So if you're partnering up with a local builder's building supply center, you can bring in their exact SKU numbers and start drawing so that when it's pulled off, you can tell them that I'm going to need 15, 26, 10 S's and send that off to your building supplier. So everything that you're drawing knows what it is and how it's handled through here. It knows it's a framed wall, it knows to use two by sixes and it knows those lengths. When it looks at top and bottom, this is how it knows the height. The height it's telling it is going to automatically extend. When I put a roof on top, and we'll play with this a little later, these walls will know how to auto automatically extend to the plate height. So if I drop the plate height of the roof down in one area to be 4 feet and extend it up in another area to be 12 feet, these walls will automatically grow and frame themselves accordingly. And attached to that wall is trim. So as I'm drawing that wall on the exterior side or on the interior side, it's automatically going to put in trim. So you can see on my interior side, it knows the baseboard that I want to use. It knows if I pop an opening into that wall, the casing that I want to put around that opening. And at the very end of my material report, I'll be able to grab the linear footage or the um, board length that I'm going to need of that particular trim. 
all of the appearance information for all of our objects are JPEGs and bitmaps. So that means you can download the exact photograph that you want for a material, whether that be from your manufacturer, um, right from their website using their, their information, or a digital picture that you take, which is a, especially helpful when you're in a remodel situation. You're on site, they want to keep the existing brick or their existing stone, you take a picture of it, you feed it in, and you can show them what the existing materials are going to look like next to the new materials that you're going to specify. So the appearance and all these um, elements that you're bringing in can have intelligence as well, matching exactly a manufacturer or a picture that you take on site. This last tab is our quantity tab. As I'm drawing this wall, it knows that it's a wall, it knows the height of that wall, it knows it's framing that wall, so we can derive off all of this extra quantity data as well. How much stone am I going to need on site? Wall ties, house wrap, how many rolls of house wrap am I going to need if it's a nine by a 100 foot roll? Sheathing tape, sheathing, the nails, the staples, everything can be assembled here in the quantity page, so as I draw that wall, it's automatically going to pull off that information for us, making that wall even more intelligent. The door that I place in has that exact same capability. When I'm putting in that door, here you can see it's automatically going to intrude, include trim around it, or I can uncheck it if I wanted it to be an unframed door. The leaf, again, any um, style of leaf, and this number one option that looks like a flat board, that also gives you the opportunity under our appearance page to bring in the exact photograph of a door. So you can show that door on that front of the home so they know exactly what it's going to look like. And even quantity information. I do want to quantify that I'm going to be ordering this particular door, but at the same time I put that door in, wouldn't it be nice to also know the locks that are included, the hinges, a doorstop trim material? So it can automatically quantify those because they're assembled here with that door. That door knows much more than that it's just a 2D representation. It knows it's part of a 3D model and the elements that it's supposed to quantify with it as well. So I'm just going to quickly move on and grab some windows and place those in as well so we can populate this model. Um, we can center them on the wall to find the exact center points. We can tell them that we want them to be a certain distance away from a corner when we're putting them in as we're creating that model. And we can also uh, drop a roof rate on top of it. So I'm going to tell it that we're building an 812 hip roof. I'm going to left click right in the middle and it automatically creates the roof geometry for us. Now that I have that roof geometry, as I said when I was looking at the walls, the walls know to attach themselves to that roof. So if I click on this wall and I change its dimensions that appear to make this room exactly 18 feet wide and 14 feet deep, you can see that the roof automatically accom um, accommodates that uh, change. I can even take a wall, drag it into a new position, and the roof will update as well. So it's intelligent how they work together. Watch as I left click on the roof. See those arrows? Those arrows are intelligent too. Each separate surface of the roof has an arrow. And that arrow is holding the information about that side of the roof. So right now, every one of those arrows are telling the roof that that side is an 812 hip at an 8 foot plate height. But if I click on an arrow, notice how it turns green. That lets that roof know that I want to change it. The red arrows are going to retain that they're an 812 hip. The green arrows know that I want to change them. So I'm going to right click and look at their properties. So in the roof intelligence here, I can tell those two sides of the roof that you need to be a 412 or you need to have a 24 inch overhang and the little representation over here will update or if I want to change the roof shape itself maybe I want it to be a gable or a mansard or a dutch hip custom would allow me to put multiple uh, slopes up one side so I could go from that 812 to a 1212 to a 2 and 12 all on that same surface or even just a double slope which will allow me to quickly create a veranda roof 12-12, dying off to a 2-12, or maybe kick outs on either side. So you just change it to be what you want it to be. And notice that it also has a quantity tab. So as I'm quantifying this roof, 
is bringing all of the information about the roof along with it. I've created that geometry of the roof, and now it can automatically give me the shingles, hip and, rip, um, hip and ridge cap, uh, shingle starters, nails, sheathing, felt paper, drip edge, all of the products that I would need to order to create that roof. And again, each one of those assembled elements can be hooked up to a part number specifically and the exact name and description that you might want to order from your building supply center. So when I click OK, those two sides of the roof have the extended overhang now and they become gables. Everything that we're designing is a 3D model. So at any time, if you want to go out, you can pop right out into a 3D view and go for a virtual tour. I'm not sure of your internet connections, but you can see that I can move that model around and walk in and around it and make any changes that I might want to. Also part of working with a, a truly intelligent model is When I was mentioning when I was walking around in the 3D model is that you can make changes anywhere that you go. When you're working on an intelligent a BIM model, the advantage of that model is being able to work in any kind of space. Popping it up into an elevational view, making changes. Um, I'm just going to change this to the front elevation. I inserted a window while I was here in, in the elevational view. I can see that in 2D. I can see that in 3D. Now that we have the information for this model, you can start to share this information and derive information of it already. So if I come up to the Tools pull-down menu, I'll be able to analyze the model and very simply just get um, my square footage. So right now on the ground floor, it's recording that I have 984.2 square feet. As I start building other locations, they'll populate as well. And the perimeter calculation, there's 162 feet and odd inches of the footprint of the perimeter as well. So that type of information, quickly pull it off the model. Back up to analyze, um, we can generate a project estimate. So this takes all of the information off the model that we were looking at when we were viewing the information behind the wall and the door, and it throws it into a project estimate. So here we can see on our ground floor, there's the headers over the windows that are being drawn. There's the plate material that it's using for the top plates and the bottom plate, 12-footers, 14, 16-footers. The sheets, 43 um, pieces of sheathing that it's going to need. Here's the studs. Um, and it has different lengths of studs as I build up a wall if it was going through those gable ends as well. My roofing materials, the rafters that are required, the sheathing that's going to be required there, and then your finishes. As it was drawing that roof and making all those changes, it recorded the drip edge, the shingles that are required, and pushing out all of that information as far as exterior finishes as well, the windows that I put in, the insulation, the drywall, doors and trim. All of that information gets thrown out into this report. And this report then can be shared. So if you want to even just take it out to Microsoft Excel, you can take that off to Excel. Or we also link up with a number of different estimating software packages as well. So if you're doing any kind of um, reporting, other types of reporting, and you're using those different types, you can pass out that information as well. It doesn't just end here on the screen. You can use it and share it in many different formats. 
that information as well about our model, if I pop it um, back into a 3D view, when I'm looking at the model, as I said, when we were looking at the properties of the walls, it had framing data associated to it. So if I come up to view framing, display the framing, it'll give me a framed view of that model as well. That's how it's piece counting every one of those studs that are in the wall, the blocking, the top plates. It's looking at that 3D model and pulling off those quantities that it's putting in as it's framing it. So I'm just going to zoom in around one of the windows here. And you can see that it's automatically framing around the window. It's following rules to do that. Here under the building locations that I'm going to pull up, as I started drawing this model on the ground floor, this is where it got its height information from. I knew it wanted that watt model to be 8 foot tall walls. You can see this last column of information allows me to say how I want walls on my ground floor to be framed. So here's where it gets its infill. 16 inches on center, double top plate, put blocking halfway up. So if I double click on that, it gives me the opportunity to swap that out and say, I don't need the blocking, just give me 16 inches on center, double top plate. And it'll automatically swap that. Here's the span table. So as I dropped in those windows and dropped in those doors, it automatically referred to the span table and said, what size of header do I need? And it can come through and say, I need a three foot span. I'm going to use two two by fours. I've got a six foot span. I'm going to use two two by sixes. So it's automatically looking at this framing data and automatically putting it in so that you know exactly the framing materials that are going to be required. Each location can have their own framing data associated to it. So it's following uh, your rules. Um, now, depending on where you are, I know, Barbara, you're in um, San Francisco, and I'm, I'm assuming everyone's from all different parts of the country. Um, when we're going to put a foundation under this building, we can follow the different information about how it's going to um, put that in. So first of all, I'm going to put a deck out back. We're going to slope down the site, and then we're going to put a full basement underneath it to accommodate that sloping site that we're going to have. So I'm going to throw it back down into 2D and skip on over to my landscape tab here and grab on my deck tool. When I look to my catalog panel to the right right now, it's showing me different construction methods for different deck styles. And when I go to use any of these decks, it's automatically going to count the posts, the decking material that I'm going to be using. If I put any railing around the deck, it'll count that as well. And all of the materials it's using, again, could be associated to a direct SKU number from your building supply center. And that material that you're using can have the exact um, material picture applied to it. So when you're looking at a composite deck board, and it may be a brand new color by a brand new manufacturer of composite boards, you can bring in that exact color. So I'm going to grab a deck, and I'm going to start building with it. I'm just going to left click, just like I was doing with the walls. So I can come over and say, you know, I'm coming over exactly five feet. And then I'm going to maybe come up five feet and typing in down here at the very bottom of the screen the length that I'm going. And then when I come back over, I want it to line up with that very first point that I did. When I right click and choose finish, it'll automatically put that deck on for me. If you notice when I started drawing that deck, I started picking points inside the walls. By doing that, I'm telling the deck that I'm building that I want to leg it to the wall with a ledger board. If I had picked to the outside of the face of the wall, it knew I would want that deck to be an independent structure. And it would have put a row of beams and columns right up against the house for me. So that deck itself, again, is another intelligent model inside our house here. It knows if I'm up against the house, if I'm against the exterior surface, it's going to be an independent structure. If it's inside the stud walls I start picking, leg it to that house. Um, looking at the properties of the deck, this is where we again start specifying those intelligent materials that they know what they are. What type of post am I using? It's not just telling it it's a 4x4 four four wood post. It's an actual 4x4 four four wood post. And it can be any shape, size that I want it to be, even a custom profile. And under that quantity tab, it can have the exact part number that I would need to order again from a manufacturer. So I can key in as much information, manufacturer, supplier, price, 
phase of a construction so it orders it in the correct phases in my material list, part numbers, it's an intelligent post. It's not just a representation of a 3D post. It knows its information behind it. Same with the footing, the decking, joist, and beam materials for that um, deck. Even the way it's framing that deck, I'm just going to pop it up here so you can see underneath the deck. It knows the difference between beam on post, beam flush, and beam to post side construction. So if I simply change the type of construction, it knows that I'm going to need more or less um, decking material to handle that new different type of construction method that I'm using. And accessories for that deck. If I define a railing, again, it's not just a railing. That railing knows it has individual parts, how to lay them out, and how to quantify them as well. So when I attach that railing to that deck and click OK, now that deck has railing. Let's take a look at it in 3D so you can visualize it a little better in our BIM model. So there's our deck and our railing going all the way around. And you can see it intelligently knows, hey, I'm up against the wall. Don't put me any railing up against there. It knows to stop. And if I put some deck stairs on the very end here, as soon as I have left click to install them, it knows to um, send down the handrail to that deck. The deck itself knows that it's in, um, attached to the terrain. So if I go to the terrain tab, I can adjust the terrain and add slopes and hills and valleys and um, adjust it so it matches my on-site situation. So I'm going to tell it that there's a five-foot slope coming from the back of the house to the end of my deck. As soon as it does that, you can see the slope starting. I might put this in a rendered outline type of view so you can see it sloping down. And the post knew that they had to get longer to reach that new terrain level. And the deck stairs knew they had to be extended to meet that new terrain level as well. So everything works together. They're intelligent, so they know that if I change one, this also needs to update. Now you can see the house um, kind of flying off in space. So this is where we'll put on that foundation. When we're dealing with putting on an additional level of the home, we would use this floor and foundation builder. It looks at the front uh, footprint that we've drawn already for our ground floor and allows us to draw additional levels, floor levels, more stories. You can have 999 stories, or you can have a foundation beneath. So I'm going to tell it when I'm building this foundation that it's one of many different types of foundation systems. Um, the software ships around the world in four different languages, so you can imagine the different types of construction methods that we, we see every day um, that our software is working with various designers around the world. So if you're lucky enough to have different projects in different regions around the world, you can use the software for all of those different projects and all the different construction methods that they might be using. So I'm going to tell it we're going to use a full basement, which would call on more specifications so we can deal with the slope site as well. So I tell it the type of um, construction that I'd be using, uh, you know, pour a 10-inch concrete wall, the floor material that I'm going to use, uh, concrete floor, and the footing materials that I'm going to be using. And again, they're not just a footing. It's an actual 3D footing. And because it's an actual 3D footing, it can be any shape, and I can quantify it. I can find out how many cubic yards of concrete or cubic feet of concrete that I'm going to require uh, for the site. I can associate to it rebar and the rebar chairs. And with my flooring material, the four inch concrete floor, because it knows it's putting in a floor, I could also associate to it at the same time mesh or insulation, rigid insulation underneath if I was going to be putting in um, in floor heating too. So when I hit finish here, this allows me to align the foundation wall with the floor above. So if I need to move the foundation wall in or out, if the ground floor walls are going to cantilever out or be recessed in on top of that foundation wall, this is where I can make those adjustments. So when I hit finish, it will automatically wrap itself around and put in the um, foundation underneath. So when you go for that virtual tour, you can see all different aspects of the home and how it's sitting on that site. Okay, So everything about it, as you, we went through, you can see is intelligent. So how else can we share this information and make it even more intelligent? Well, 
how about the interior of the home? I'm just going to put in a ceiling inside the space. And let's actually walk through and do it in 3D. I'm going to place a camera right in these front doors. And then I'm going to go for a walk around. As I'm walking around this space, I can see out onto my deck through those doors. But let's design in this area here. Let's put in some cabinetry. And as I'm grabbing the cabinetry, again, intelligent elements. They know the, the size. Um, you can apply a manufacturer and a supplier to them. You can um, put in appliances as well. And again, they can be linked up to a manufacturer and a supplier. So if I look at um, this um, gas range as an example, it can even hook itself up to a hyperlink. And I could send that off to a website that has the exact specifications for that particular gas range. And then that um, hyperlink or those notes could also appear in that material list as well. If I wanted to add that data and attach that data to the material list, that hyperlink could also be thrown into that material report. So they could grab that website address and go to the exact specifications. And again, who's the manufacturer? What's the supplier? What's the part number on that range? So we know the exact unit that we're dealing with. All of those can be put in through our kitchen designer. When we're using the kitchen designer, it allows us to design the, the entire kitchen at this one time. So I just tell it the general shape of the kitchen, the orientation of the appliances and the plumbing fixtures within that shape, and then the materials that I'm going to be using. And again, all of these materials can be a picture of the exact slab of granite or marble that you want to use. Take that digital picture, feed it in, so I'm using that exact um, picture of that granite so they can see exactly what it's going to look like. And then you just map out on the floor here where this kitchen is going to start. I'm just going to walk back a little further so I can grab onto that corner and I'm going to snap to that corner. And I hope you can see over the internet the um, mapping out on the ground that I've done. So I'm just chalk lining on the floor where those cabinets are going to reside. So when I hit yes, it'll automatically snap those cabinets in um, to those positions. And those cabinets, um, being intelligence objects as well and separate objects, I'm just hitting delete on my keyboard right now to get rid of some that I might not want. Or I can also replace these with different types of cabinets. So if I wanted a different type of cabinet, or if I wanted to build a custom cabinet, I could come in and change their properties, maybe make it two doors, maybe make it deeper, taller, wider, put a glass front panel on it, give it a different material um, that I want to specify. So when I click OK, we can visualize what it would look like with that type of window in there. Um, again, windows, I can at any kind of point here, if I wanted to put a window over that sink, we can, we can do that too. Under in, um, interiors, with the lighting, we can grab any kind of light. And I, I hope you can see this over the internet as well. I'm not sure how, how well that's being portrayed while you're looking at my screen. But as I'm moving my cursor around, the light, that pot light that I've grabbed, um, is illuminating and showing me the effects that that light is going to have on the, the space. So that gives you the opportunity with your clients to show them task lighting that's required in a space if they want to have under cabinet lighting illuminated. And each one of these lights, they're intelligent too. They know that their wattage that's associated to them. They know where the light is coming down. You can change the light's position so you can face it in different directions as you would with different types of lights. You can edit the light and each of these lights can come from an IES file. And an IES file is an intelligent electrical light file that's put, produced by the manufacturers. So someone like GE would put out an IES file for a 40 watt incandescent recess mount light. So when we grab that IES file, we're reading it and illuminating exactly like that 40 watt incandescent recess mount light would. So it's not just an illusion of light, but it's the actual wattage that it would produce as well. And we use that in our photorealistic renderings. So even the lights themselves have intelligence built into them too. Um, when you're dealing with plumbing fixtures as well, that we have our sink, 
um, again, can be keyed up to exact manufacturers. We have a site here, if you can see my cursor over in the catalog, what if I want to grab more information, different manufacturers? How do I get those into my model? Well, if I click on that download more option here, it takes you into a website where you can download different manufacturers. So you can have Kohler um, objects, Lennox, Marvin Windows, all of these various manufacturers, you can download all of their different elements. So with Maytag, if you wanted their exact appliances, they've got over 301 in our catalog that they've supplied to us. So you can grab all of those and bring them in so you're using that exact data as well. How else can you analyze this model and share it to make it a true BIM model? Well, we have different export capabilities as well. We can export this out as a 2D image, just a JPEG or a bitmap, a 2D drawing, DWG or DXF. The 3D model can be exported out in SketchUp format, DWG format, IFC format. We um, export out to Warehouse or Javelin in our construction suite software so that Javelin can analyze the model and specify the floor joists that are required. The same with CSD iStruct, they also um, have an analyzing solution and they can provide their products as well as MyTech um, for the roof trusses. Boise BC Framer, again for floor joists and um, header material. Simpson um, Solutions um, for their material analyzing as well. And also as well as 2020 Kitchen Design. So if you are working with a kitchen designer and you want to send them our BIM model that you've created, you can export it out to 2020 and then they'll be able to um, read that and open that, that file as well. And that's through our uh, professional software, Envisioner Professional has all of these export capabilities. So taking this one model, deriving that all that information, and then being able to produce those automatic elevations, sections that you can cut through the model, um, 3D visuals, um, that we went inside. As we're walking inside, we give it a more uh, cartoony appearance, if you will, so that you can quickly navigate. But we can take that through an entire rendering process so you can produce photorealistic images, like photographs. Um, and those images look at where you are in the world, what time of day it is. So when you're looking at your options, you can say your global settings, time of day, where you are, when is it in the world right now, it's May, and it's in the year 2015, and today is the 27th. So we can tell we're here on this date, this is the time, this is where I am in the world, and I can cast down the shades and shadows accurately so they can see exactly what it's going to look like given their northing, north degree, and we can see the shades and shadows that it would produce and give it that photorealistic appearance. Um, we have, I'll give you a gallery of different photorealistic um, images that have been produced in our software. So you can see the um, level of quality um, that you can um, produce with our software. So here are some different images. And this is the type of effect that you'll be able to create when you go through that photorealistic image. Trying to create a photorealistic image over the internet using GoToMeeting with many of you on the line right now would um, um, tax out my machine and I wouldn't want to hold you on the line. But when you're creating an image like this kitchen scene that we have here, you can see that the materials themselves, again, intelligent materials, it knows it's a glossy finish on the countertop. It knows it's a dull finish on the cabinetry. Um, those are related to the material. So that in material can then produce that when it's creating this photorealistic image. When we create the um, renderings, they're saved as JPEGs and bitmaps so that you can share those um, with your um, different clients by just sending them the JPEGs and images or put them up on your website. Um, I want to go back to our BIM presentation now. And we've talked about what we can do and the, the information that we can produce. So now um, I'm going to continue on talking about BIM and, again, different uh, benefits that you, you have with that BIM model. So when we're looking at BIM for everyone, always know that when you're adopting a BIM solution 
into your practice. It has to be easy. If it's not easy to use, and you can't fly around and create a model very quickly, it becomes a process, and a very difficult process that when you're busy, you skip steps. So it has to be easy, and you have to maximize the information that you can obtain from that model very quickly and efficiently. And you have to partner with best-in-class technology. So when you want to be able to share that information and export that information, you want to make sure that you're sharing with all the best-in-class software applications that someone might need to share with. And that application must focus on its strengths. Envisioneer and ProArchitect um, are focused on the framing and the building of that intelligent model. And then we're going to pass that information off when we have to do that final analysis and use things like Green um, Building Studio or ResCheck when we're doing those energy calculations because that's their focus and that's their strength. Um, and achieving success with BIM, if you're adopting BIM, um, again, achieving that success is going to be out of the ease of use. It's critical. You don't want to adopt something that's hard to use and requires lots and lots of training and nobody can really understand it. You might get one guy, that real keener in your office that gets it, but if nobody else gets it, how are you going to adopt and share that model and make it intelligent? And you must be able to share the information to estimates, to accounting solutions, to other 2D CAD draftsmen that might want to do a particular detail, to structural analysis software. And when you're making those revisions in the model, it has to trigger updates in the working drawings. And that information has to be tracked through its entire um, life cycle. From the minute that that person arrives in your office with a model that they might have created and or sketched out and giving you that PDF, that information has to chug its way all through the life cycle of that model. You build that intelligent model. You pass that information off to the building supply center with those SKU numbers. You watch it to be delivered on site. Everything has to be tracked to be a true BIM model from the minute that that design has been um, was under concept to when it's delivered on site. So at CADSoft, we have a tagline that BIM is for everyone, and it's really become our mission statement. One simple model, an initial design concept from a homeowner, should be able to be shared and distributed throughout the entire home building process, the power of BIM for everyone from homeowner to supplier and manufacturer, can automate your business and it's just as it has for companies around the world using our BIM software. So Barbara, at this time, um, I'm free to take up any questions that anyone might have about our software. Yes, uh, uh, so wow, what a great presentation. Uh, um, I am convinced. <laughs> I, I have to get it now. Um, there was one question right at the beginning. Um, somebody was wondering, is IFC both in and out? or we have, Yes, we have the capability to do the export out now okay. of the IFCs. And as the IFC is um, firming up their um, options, we'll be able to import it in at a later date. But right now, we can export out an IFC. And what about SKP files? They're SKP not... files, okay. yeah, those can be imported and okay. exported out. But those are not CAD files. No, the SKP file is a SketchUp file. Okay. So we can import and export out in SketchUp format. Okay. So that that was it. And um, wow, did you did I hear you correctly? You said at the beginning, the best beam for your back. I think this yeah. should be <laughs> this should be also your tagline. That's uh, really. <laughs> Really clever. Um, no, that was uh, fantastic. If you don't run now and get it, I don't know. You know, it, this this is uh, quite amazing. Um, hopefully, everything worked out with the recording because we lost the connection for a few seconds. So, fingers crossed. Um, I'm gonna have to take the screen, uh, make the presenter. Also, I want to remind everybody that Chantal is gonna have another webinar with us. On July 22nd is already scheduled, so stay tuned for information about this future webinar. Um, uh, so if you liked what you saw today, you, you know, there's going to be even more. So sh can you see my screen? I can. Yeah. Okay, great. I would like to thank everybody uh, for attending. And I want to remind everyone also to visit our page at novage.com where you will find the CatSoft product. 
Novaj is the best way to buy design software online. For information on the latest special and new releases, join the Novaj network on Facebook, Google Plus, or Twitter, and subscribe to the Novaj blog for great interviews and news. In our next upcoming uh, webinar in July, Real Flow 2015, quality control and speed. Thank you again for joining us today. Um, we'll see you all uh, with uh, Chantal on July 22nd. And uh, with uh, our Novage webinar series, we'll resume in July. Um, thank you, Chantal, so much. It was wonderful. Uh, fingers crossed everything. The recording is, you know, will be perfect and flawless. And um, thanks for joining us today. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Barbara. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.